The luxury brand of Hyundai Genesis has been on a tear since 2020. Massive sales on 21, 22, and 23 have springboarded them into a new level of luxury, and it's not stopping anytime soon. For the New York Auto Show this year, we have two new concepts. They have a full-blown what's called Magma performance line. I'll have a separate video detailing that for you guys. It is a fighter against AMG, BMW's M, and you can say in some ways a Lexus F, but right here is more of a true ultra luxury SUV to go against the Cullinan and the Bentega. Let's get into this. <laughs> Guys, if you're excited for Genesis like I am, make sure to smash the like button. Make sure to also check out my review on the GV70 that I did recently, smashing car, as well as the GV60 fully electric that I did before that. So what we're looking at here is called the Neo Loon, also known as New Moon, and it is exquisite. This thing is very, very impressive. It is fully electric, no surprise. Genesis is really pushing the envelope there. Now, let's go over the design and then we'll get on the inside and break that down as well. Genesis badge here on the hood. We have, I call it the Happy Meal design. It's almost like this smiley face that's taking a drink out of a straw. They haven't implemented it into production quite yet, but they seem quite serious about these parallel lines and kind of like this, I don't know, sippy face. But down below that, very minimal uh, grill design, of course, with an electric vehicle. Uh, oh, I just noticed this detail. Do you see Genesis in here inside of the seemingly dual layer grill? That is a nice attention to detail. Uh, and if details are what this vehicle should be all about. The door handles, I don't know where they plan to be, but the roof rails suck into the body. So you don't need to have them out when you don't need them. And that should improve range a little bit, but they have roof rails that pop out. We have digital side mirrors that wouldn't make it to the United States market. Next picture, check out this guy. Now, the rumors are saying this would be on the EGMP platform and it would share with the EV9 or the Ionic 9 from the Kia and Hyundai brands. It's hard to say, to be honest, um, with an ultra luxury vehicle like this, it might be on, let's say, a next generation platform compared to those more mainstream brands. These wheels are interesting. These large five spoke wheels they are, it kind of reminds me of like a screwdriver star drive and it's twisting, twisting counterclockwise here to pull it forward. If you looked at the other side of the vehicle, it would be twisting clockwise. I think if my brain's working correctly, their Genesis logo on the inside of it and those parallel lines go all the way through the front fender uh, and through the grill. And the taillights pick up where the, the headlights or the daytime running lights left off on the back. Very sleek from the side. It looks extremely regal, very impressive. Is it a little bit too simple, a little bit too sleek? Maybe. It definitely has a very nice stance from the rear um, and Genesis logo here. It does. They don't give us any images, but apparently this um, top taillight is supposed to be kind of like checkered or plaid sort of design. Um, here's the Neo Loon concept. It's, it's very impressive. All right, let's get onto the inside. There's a lot to say here. This screen is way too tall. I would imagine it pops into the view of the driver and you can see the magma cars here uh, on the racetrack, but I would assume this would be much shorter. Chop off the top third of the screen and call it a day. Now, interestingly, they don't have any screen behind the steering wheel here, unless this is a screen right here inside the steering wheel, but it could be. Now, Genesis has said they're not in the business of just making concepts. So this vehicle will come to production in some shape or form. And they're having next generation sound equipment here for more 3D effect. Um, these wood panels that run the length of the vehicle, there is no carpet on the bottom, it's wood, they are heated. And so the surfaces of the vehicle, especially the hard touch, are radiating heat. And that's supposed to be a little bit more efficient. And if you look at, let's say, uh, a little Lexus RZ, they have heat radiators that they want you to use in order to lengthen your driving range on that BEV. And it looks like they're doing something similar here with this Neoloon concept. Now, this could be what was also rumored to be called the GV90 to sit on top of the GV80 as the flagship for 
the um, the crossovers in the lineup. These pedals look extremely regal. We have these touch capacitive controls here uh, to control the, the rear doors opening. And guys, I haven't even got to the show stopping feature yet. Um, which is the, the coach style doors, which I'll get into in a little bit. This is really weird. So apparently this is the drive. Well, it is the drive select shifter. And instead of being column mounted on the right hand side, it's vertically mounted. It's very bizarre. You can see P here, neutral. And so apparently when it's in park, it's in this 12 o'clock position. And then when you put it into drive, it goes to the two o'clock position. Very strange. No one's seen that before. And um, we have climate control shortcut here on the steering wheel that must pop it up on the screen. We have the rotary dial to uh, in interact with the screen as well. Now this clock flips kind of like the GV60 has the flipping drive select and on the opposite side is crystal. These are your buttons for seeking um, and setup. You see your favorites button here. You have map, nav, media, those traditional Hyundai buttons. The, the interior is this regal purple color. Uh, it, they say it's silk leather. I don't know what that means exactly. Maybe it's a super soft leather. Uh, and they also have cashmere in here. But yeah, here is the coach style opening. So uh, it reminds me a little bit of the Toyota Century SUV that I detailed for you guys when I was in Japan, but the model that I detailed didn't have the sliding doors. This does not have sliding doors. They just open, uh, I guess, like like that. Uh, am I doing that right? I think so. That's a coach coach style door. <laughs> Anyways, um, we have screens on the top. You have maybe another clock up here, speakers on the top as well. Um, this square-like pattern and texture all on the doors. Apparently, the, this area on the door could be heated as well. Um, and the front passenger can be rotated uh, to face the rear. And what I also... So everything su seems super plush in here, but the armrests seem very hard touch, uh, which is a bit strange. The, the, the center consoles here are connected um, with this kind of twisting pattern. Never seen that before. You can see the speakers in the back, the the um, the dual sunroofs, which kind of also mirror their parallel lines on the front headlights and the rear tail lights. So you have the parallel sunroofs in here as well. Um, and then here's the magma, which will be a different vi uh, video. And then here's a better image of the coach style doors. Um, there's a few different websites here. So they have the main press page for nerds like me who download the images and then this is this one is more of the traditional interactive website um, where you scroll down and it'll give you you know their fancy um, descriptions of different parts about the vehicle here is the the charging port this looks like ccs2 Again, here in North America, it will be the Nax charger. Here's a different image that we didn't have in the press kit. Another image that we didn't have in the press kit. So this, I guess, interactive page here has more details in, in some ways. We didn't have this angle of the interior in the press kit either. And this screen just seems way too big. It would cut into the visibility. And it looks strange having this vertical shift lever as well. There's the coach style doors. Here's the back seat with the champagne for the campaign cooler. Love that feature. Royal Indigo Cashmere Purple Silk Leather come together to elevate the comforting ambiance of the cabin. There's the crystal for the clock. The iconic crystal sphere acts as both artistic centerpiece and a hi-fi tweeter speaker. I didn't read that before. That's crazy. Crystal speakers. Undall, the heating system inspired by Credia's traditional underfloor heating has been carefully installed with low power radiant heating film set up. We aim to enhance the heating efficiency while providing customers with an experience reminiscent of a luxurious lounge. Adjustable display moves vertically. Guys, I should have read all this before, but I don't think this was in the press release, which I read before. Seamlessly integrated into the dashboard while driving to optimize voice command and recognition and navigation of functionality. When the vehicle is stationary, you can indulge in a full entertainment experience on the 24.6 inch display. So there you go. When it's in park, the screen can rise up. I feel like that'd be pretty distracting. I actually wouldn't care for that. Let me know, would you guys like the pop-up TV screen while you're parked? Would you like it to be recessed while you're driving? It seems a bit overkill. 
and just seems like more some more things to go wrong. Here's that shifter, uh, a high res image of the shifter here. Rotating column type shift by wire has been integrated seamlessly into the steering wheel to prioritize safety and offer superior aesthetics. I don't know if it offers superior aesthetics because it just leaves me looking at it like what the F why is this vertical instead of horizontal? But the driver-centric intuitive interface remains at the 12 o'clock when parked and shifts to the clue at 2 o'clock upon engine ignition. Now, engine ignition, is that just kind of loss on words? Because we just saw it being charged and the the design of it is totally electric. I think it's, it's maybe not the best translation here from Korean. It probably means like upon... Um, putting the vehicle into drive or something like that. All right, in a vehicle like this, they imagine you have a private jet. You just drive up to your private jet on the free or the runway, I should say, and that's it. So are you guys impressed with this vehicle? It reminds me in a lot of ways a competitor to the Century SUV, the Bentley Bentega, uh, the Colonan, uh, or Colonan from Rolls-Royce. It is definitely trying to be that luxury player. Now, it's only a four-seater. Would they make models that are five uh, to seven-seat? Could they even put a third row in here? I would assume so if it's going to be, in theory, based off of or potentially based off the Ionic 7 and EV9 or Ionic 9 is what the new naming could be. It could absolutely have three rows. So I, I bet that what they're showing here is the ultra-luxury package um, for VIP customers, and they could have lesser lesser priced models that maybe that don't have the coach doors. And by the way, the coach doors are saying is not just a concept. They're saying technology has evolved for them allow to allow coach doors without a B pillar. Okay. In production. So they are a hundred percent on intent and bringing the coach doors to the market. Now, will it pass safety laws? They seem, they seem to think it will. But time will tell, and I wouldn't be surprised when this hits the market, which it will in some shape or form. I wouldn't be surprised if it has the B-pillar and more traditional doors. But again, time will tell. Also, there's retracting running boards, which doesn't shouldn't come as a surprise here. But I'm going to end it there. What do you think of the Neoloon concept? Is it good enough? Let me know what else you would want from this vehicle uh, that Genesis isn't talking about yet, like powertrain, range, that sort of thing. I'm going to shut it down. And make sure to watch my video on the Magma series, the Magma from Genesis. Thank you guys for watching, and have a good day. Peace.